Hi, my name is Kara McCauley and I'm a Purdue University graduate student in the Weed Science Group. And today I'm excited to talk to you about one of our research trials we conducted in North Central Indiana looking at factors that affect herbicide particle drift. Within the state of Indiana, there are approximately five and a half million acres of soybeans grown. And in 2017, it is estimated that 1.3 million of those acres were planted with extend soybeans, soybeans that are modified to be resistant to dicamba. As herbicide resistant weeds continue to cause issues for farmers across the US, the availability of new crop technology with herbicide resistant traits provides a new weed management tool for farmers to control these troublesome pests. As adoption of dicamba tolerant crop technology increases, farmers and applicators have noted more instances of off-target dicamba movement. Today, we are going to investigate two application factors that are known to affect herbicide particle drift, nozzle selection and boom height. The purpose of this video is to show the importance of nozzle selection and boom height when spraying dicamba and to demonstrate that proper nozzle selection and boom height are key to mitigating off-target herbicide movement. This large-scale trial was conducted in September 2017 within a field of dicamba-susceptible double-crop soybeans. There were seven treatments that were replicated three times within the field. Among these seven treatments were three different 11004 nozzles, a traditional extended range, or XR nozzle, turbo T-jet, or TT, and a turbo T-jet induction, or TTI. Using each of these three nozzles, Extinimax was applied at a boom height of 24 and 48 inches above the soybean canopy height. The seventh treatment tested in Genia with the TTI nozzle at the 24 inch height. Both Extendamax and Ingenia were applied at 10 gallons per acre, 40 PSI, and at a half pound acid equivalent per acre, which is equivalent to 22 ounces of Extendamax and 12.8 ounces of Ingenia per acre. The weather application was 78 degrees Fahrenheit with 48% relative humidity. The spray applications were made by four nozzle CO2 pressurized backpack sprayer held at a stationary position for 15 seconds, and all applications were made at the same time. In order to quantify the particle drift from each treatment, injury ratings were recorded 14 and 28 days after spray application. Injury was rated on a transect from the beginning of the spray to where the soybean injury stopped. To visualize, GPS coordinates of injury boundaries were also recorded. This bar chart shows the average distance from the beginning of the spray application where at least 5% injury was observed. For each nozzle, the distance of injury was farther for the treatments sprayed at 48 inches, the black bars, compared to 24 inches, the gold bars. The results from this experiment show that herbicide injury symptoms were observed the farthest from the beginning of the spray with the XR nozzle at the 48 inch boom height, with injury of at least 5% observed up to 430 feet from the spray application. The use of TTI nozzles, the nozzles that were designed with the target of drift reduction, performed up to their expectation and resulted in the least distance of herbicide injury from the spray application for both Extendamax and Ingenia herbicides. Across each of the different nozzles, maintaining a boom height of 24 inches above the canopy compared to 40 inches was compared to minimizing the distance traveled by the herbicide particles. These results are consistent with what we expected to see. The use of the improved nozzle design and a low boom height resulted in the least amount of soybean injury resulting from herbicide particle drift. One unexpected result from this experiment was the observation of inconsistent width speed and direction across the trial area. As noted, particularly in the second replication in the middle of this image, the dark blue and green colored areas, which represent the XR nozzles at 48 and 24 inches respectively, have an injury area pattern that curves south, while others follow what was reported as a west wind. Also, the application times of the three replications varied from 4.45 to 5 p.m., and within that 15-minute time span, the average wind speed recorded during the 15-second spray timings ranged from 5.7 to 10.2 miles an hour, with maximum wind gusts up to 12.7 during the final spray timing. In conclusion, the use of approved nozzles and maintaining a low boom height decreased herbicide particle drift in our experiment. As always, it is imperative to follow the label instructions for any herbicide or pesticide application.